Welcome. My name is Hong Wei. I am president of the Cupertino Rotary. And today, welcome to the annual State of the City Address. And as is uh, by our city mayor, Rod Sings. And as is our custom, please rise and join our mayor, Rod Sings, in the Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. Rod. Thank you, Hung. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mayor Sings. On behalf of the board, cabinet, and the 211 members of the Cupertino Rotary, it is my pleasure to welcome each and one of you to the State of the City Address. First, I would like to recognize the cabinet and board members of Cupertino Rotary. Our cabinet members are in charge of club financials, policies, and, and strategic planning, while the cabinet members take care of all the operational actions. All Cupertino Rotary cabinet and board members, please rise. Let's give them a big round of applause for their dedication and their contribution and service to our community. Thank you very much. As you know, the mission of Rotary is to provide service to communities worldwide as well as locally. In servicing, Rotary also promotes integrity, advanced understanding, goodwill, and peace through fellowship of business, professional, and community leaders. Together with our hands and our heart, we make a difference one project at a time. We are not just all work and no fun. We have a lot of fellowship activities. So when we do projects together, we also make lifelong friends at Rotary. So if you're not a Rotary member presently, you're interested to know about the activities of Rotary and interested in making long-term friends in our community, please come see me after the meeting or talk to many of the Rotarians present. You are welcome to join us every Wednesday from noon to 1.30 exactly right here in our weekly meeting. Come check us out. So um, we would like to sh introduce to you just a few things that Rotary has done last year. Last year, Ro our Rotary Foundation raised about $250 million each year for hum humanitarian projects worldwide. And Polio Plus Commitment by Cupertino Rotary, Rotary, Pro uh, Rotary International is a commitment to world that we will eradicate polio in the near future. As for Cupertino Rotary, we have over 220 business, professional, and community leaders. We raised and distributed last year about $230,000, and we volunteered over 10,000 volunteer hours. These are just a few of the fun programs we did at Cupertino Rotary. Uh, snowflakes that we helped via camp uh, to serve uh, kids and adults. And we have um, Dr. Sue's reading day at Cupertino Union School District. So we have a lot of fun making friends and doing community service project. Please come and check us out. Now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce the 2015 President of the Cupertino Chamber of Commerce, Rich Abdallah. Rich, come on up. And I want to say Rich is also a board member of Cupertino Rotary. Thank you, Hong. Can you hear me in the back? Can you hear me back there? Great, thank you. Good afternoon. As President of the Chamber of Commerce, it is my privilege and honor to welcome you to the 2015 Cupertino City State of the, uh, State of the City Address. Uh, my job as President of the Chamber would not be possible if I didn't have the support of the volunteers that work on the Board of Directors and our Chamber staff. It worked. So far, so good. Anyway, um, these folks are either our volunteers at the top there, and they are on our, uh, our chamber board, and we have our executive director, events manager, and communications coordinator at the bottom. These folks make the chamber work. They make us, they allow us to do the things we want to do. Would you just join me? I'd like them to stand, staff and board members, and give them a, a round of applause for me to let them know how much we appreciate it. I would like to take a minute to do, uh, to, to kind of give you a little 
information about the role of the chamber, and hopefully at the end of this, I'll convince you to consider joining if you aren't already a member. The mission of our chamber is to promote and enhance the business environment and the climate of the Cupertino. Now on the screen now are just a sampling of the members that are uh, part of the chamber. Um, if you join today, I have a very good deal for you. We will make sure that next year you're on this slide. <laughs> so just let me know. I don't know that we have the applications today, but if you're interested, talk to Anjali. Now I've got, uh, we, got we have five reasons that we think are very good for you to join the chamber. Branding. We have opportunities to advertise. We have opportunities to promote your business. Uh, many of the businesses will uh, buy, in effect, advertising at our events, and they can be very powerful. Uh, two, we have visibility. We are well known in the community. We have a business directory, and we have a very good website. Advocacy. We are very active in the city. We are connected with the city administration and the city council, and we work with them on various projects, ordinances, and so forth. And of course, we are here for economic and community development. Last but not least, one of our most popular events is the networking and mixly, mixly, monthly mixers and quarterly coffees that we have for networking. Okay. All right. Now, as the chamber grows in 2015, we are looking to make some minor remodeling changes to the building that we have on Silverado Avenue which is where my fiance said she was 15 minutes ago and I had to give her directions to get here, so we'll see. Please keep in mind that we're, the remodeling is done with the idea of the, the angst that the city is concerned about con over the height, density, and so forth. So I'd like to start by showing you what our current building looks like. As you can see, it's a one-story modest building. It is very functional. We do have a tenant there, and so we are we are going to suggest and going to propose, uh, and I have a sketch of it, a brand new building to go there uh, in place of this, and I'd like to show it to you now. <laughs> now, the lady at the bottom is Anjali. The gentleman at the top is her husband. The plan is that they're going to live there and be on the property 24 hours a day. Of course, we're kidding. All right, uh, we do have uh, four major events this year I'd like to bring to your attention. On February 26th, just around the corner at 11.30 a.m., we are going to be celebrating the 17th annual Lunar New Year Luncheon. The luncheon will be held at the Dynasty Restaurant. It's a lot of fun. It's also a good way to get some promotion. March 28th, we will be ha holding the Star Awards Banquet at the beautiful Cypress Hotel. On October 17th, we will have our annual Diwali Festival at the Memorial Park from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. That festival started out, Mahesh Nihalani was very instrumental in getting it going. It started out, I don't know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago. I remember the first time they did it, it was like two booths back there, if at all, behind here, right about here. And now it's a full day and we have literally thousands of people coming, so it's a great event. Uh, on November 14th, we will bring you the Taste of Cupertino at Valco Mall between the hours of 4.30 and 7.30 p.m. And that's a lot of fun, easy to get to. You can bring the kids, they can run around. That's important. Okay, before I move on to introduce the dignitaries in the attendance today, I'd like to announce our Star Award winners. Now, STAR is an acronym for Service, Teamwork, Achievement, and Recognition. Each year, the Chamber selects a number of individuals and businesses that we feel have made a significant contribution either to the community or to the Chamber. These names have not been revealed except to the recipients. What I'd like to do is announce them, and I'd like the um, winners to stand, and when they're all standing and we're done, I'd like to give them an applause rather than one at a time. <clears throat> this year, in picking the Small Business of the Year, we had two very good businesses, and we decided rather than picking between them, we would put both of them on there. 
The small business of the year includes Art Cohen's Blue Light Cinema and Lapador Bakery, owned by Judy and Johnny Lee. Would they stand up if there are any representatives from here and stay standing? No. <laughs> All right. Okay. Medium business of the year, Pacific Workplaces, Keith Warner. Large business of the year, the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Department. The, uh, the Chamber Ambassador of the Year is Mark Yamamoto. And the President's Award will go to Donnie and Corky Axelson. There's Donna. Now, this is for the first time we are announcing the winner of the Citizen of the Year. Again, we couldn't pick between this couple, so we decided to make them both Citizens of the Year, and we couldn't be happier, Judy and Bill Wilson. All right, thank you, you may be seated. We hope to see you on Saturday, March 28th at the Cypress Hotel, it's, it's a, a fun event. Uh, a lot of awards are given out. Um, I've been giving my marching orders to keep the speeches short. Uh, I, I like short speeches, so I will do my job. <laughs> now today we have a, quite a number of dignitaries that I would like to introduce, and um, I will ask them to rise, and we will give them a recognition. Now, the city of Cupertino has adopted for the state of the city address the one clap rule. Now, if you're not familiar with the one clap rule, is as I make the name announcement, you give a single clap. I'd like to practice that first. Everybody looks pretty serious, so let's just try this one time. Now, on the count of three, I'd like you to do one clap to practice, okay? One, two, three. You're all good. You were ready to go. All right. From State Senator Jim Bell's office, Alex Vara. Is Alex here? Right there. Okay. From <clears throat> Assembly Member Evan Lowe's office, District D Director Margaret, uh, it's Abby Koga, and, and Senior D District Representative Monica Tong. Santa Clara County, our own area supervisor, Joe Semidian. From the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Department, Under Sheriff John Hirakawa, Assistant Sheriff Kenneth Binder, Assistant Sheriff Carl Newsom. And finally, Captain Rick Sung. From the Santa Clara County Fire District, Deputy Fire Chief Tony Bowden. Did you stand up, Tony? There he is, thank you. City of Cupertino, we have the entire board with us today and I'll go through them. Starting with, of course, Mayor Rod Sinks. Vice Mayor Barry Chang. Council Member Gilbert Wong. Council Member Savita Watanayan. I wasn't quite right. No, I do nothing. Okay. Why do nothing? I tried. <laughs> Finally, Council Member and immediate past president of the Chamber of Commerce, Darcy Paul. After Darcy, also associated with the city, is our city manager, David Brent. All right, we also have um, some former city council members and mayors actually, and I would like to introduce those folks as well. Uh, I've seen three of them, I don't know. Is Barbara Rogers here today? I don't think I saw Barbara, okay. So the first one I'd like to introduce is, is former council member and mayor Oren Mahoney, former council member and mayor Mark Santoro, Former council member and mayor Sandra James. Former council member and mayor Barbara Rogers. I don't see Barbara today. If, if I missed her, I'm sorry. Okay, we have a couple more groups here to go through. The board of trustees of the Cupertino Union School District. Board president Phils Vogel. Board vice president Joe Lucy. Board member Anjali Kalsar and board member Jeff Moe. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I skipped. Let's try that over again. <laughs> board member Kristen Lynn. I'm sorry, Kristen. From the Board of Trustees of the Fremont Union High School District. Board President Barbara Nunes. <laughs> board Vice President Hung Wei. And Board Member Jeff Mo. And finally, from the Cupertino Sanitary District, Board President Angela Chen. All right. Now we're going to go to the section of our program to grant awards to our public safety officers. Hung is going to join me for this particular presentation. Now each year this event takes time to recognize our public safety officers who have made a significant difference in Cupertino. Uh, I would like to call up Deputy Fire Chief Tony Bowden who will introduce the fire department recipient. Captain McGuire, why don't you come up here and join me? <clears throat> Mayor Sinks, council members, esteemed guests, good afternoon. It's an honor to be here today to talk to you about Fire Captain Tim McGuire, who's being honored for his dedication and service to the Santa Clara County Fire Department and to the communities we serve. Captain McGuire turned his focus towards establishing a career in public service after growing up in Cupertino and, graduation, and graduating from Monta Vista High School. Tim began his professional fire service career in 2002 with the South San Francisco Fire Department and in 2008 brought his professional career home, joining the Santa Clara County Fire Department as a firefighter, engineer, paramedic assigned to the Cupertino Fire Station on Stevens Creek Boulevard. Being passionate about public service and his role in emergency services, Tim's efforts on behalf of the fire service are extensive. He promoted to the rank of fire captain in 2013, employing invaluable experience and skill in serving the fire service, and more specifically, the community of Cupertino. Captain McGuire is a certified paramedic, a fire service instructor, and holds numerous other certifications in such fields as hazardous materials, rescue systems, communications, and fire command. His grant writing expertise has been instrumental in securing grant funding in the support of the community's emergency service needs. He is also an innovative speaker who has worked with the United States Coast Guard to develop policies and procedures for marine responses and has served as a coordinator for various fire department programs throughout the years. In recognition of his efforts, Tim was presented with Santa Clara County's Employee Excellence Award in November of 2012. As a lead member of County Fire's communications group, Captain McGuire has been working very closely with the Cupertino Amateur Radio Emergency Service Group, or CARES. For over a year now, he's been the driving force behind integrating the CARES group with County Fire. This program will outfit every fire station in the city of Cupertino with a ham radio base station and packet communications designed to support the city in the event of a large disaster. While Tim takes great pleasure in serving his community, when away from work, he enjoys time with his wife Stacy and their twins, Cole and Lily, Captain McGuire's devotion to family, fire service, and the community he serves is commendable. His devotion to providing exceptional work in support of our communities exemplifies the spirit of public service. Congratulations. <laughs> Are you going to call up the folks that they're, we, we have awards from various agencies and I'd like them to come up right now, sorry, script here, a little confused on it. We have a representative from Saturday Bell's office, I think, to give an award, and from Supervisor, or, well, Supervisor Simidian, and a representative from um, uh, Assemblymember Lowe's office, and I believe the mayor is coming up for this as well.
stayed up so we can take a group picture. Okay. We got all three inside. Everybody here already? Okay. Now I would like to come uh, call up Sheriff's Captain Kenneth Binder, who introduced the next recipient. Please come up. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry I don't look as good as uh, Assistant Sheriff Ken Binder, but uh, my name is Captain Rick Sung, and uh, I am the captain in charge of the law enforcement services for the city of Cupertino. And I truly feel honored to be here today to be able to recognize one of our finest and outstanding deputies who had served our community well. Uh, Deputy Jennifer Toomey, please come stand next to me. Thank you. <laughs> you don't have to go too far. Thank you. <laughs> Deputy Jennifer Toomey has been with the Sheriff's Office for 14 years, and she was assigned to uh, West Valley Patrol for uh, since from 2008 to the beginning of this year. And half of her tenure at West Valley Patrol, she worked as school enforcement officer. Now, for those of you who are confused about the role uh, between the school enforcement officer and school resource officer, like I was when I first learned it, um, their primary objective is kind of like the same. Uh, they like to keep everyone on school campus safe, but help the students succeed. However, their um, approaches are totally different. So when school resource officers normally interact with our, with our children and students through various fun and entertaining school activities and programs, school enforcement officers step in when someone is in trouble. And they do their job by direct application of enforceable laws, such as penal codes and education codes. So it's like the firefighters and law enforcement officers, right? Firefighters keep our community safe with the fire engine and fire hose, and we do it with a patrol car and a ticket book. So when a firefighter is done putting out the fire, the normal response that we get from our community is, thank you so much, Mr. Firefighter, you saved my day. <laughs> well, when a law enforcement is done writing a citation, I better not repeat what I heard when I work patrol because it will be totally inappropriate. But as you can see, it's extremely difficult to make friends as a school enforcement officer doing what they do. Um, so why do people like Jennifer so much and why is she here? When speaking of Jennifer Toomey, there are three things that come to my mind. She's extremely hardworking, respectful, and committed. Jennifer has investigated and taken over 300 reports in the last four years as a school enforcement officer. The type of cases that she investigated were assault cases, child abuse case, theft, various um, education, in, uh, education code violations, as well as sexual assaults. They are very difficult to investigate. Now the number of cases she investigated is impressive, but what is more impressive is the manner she handled those cases. Jennifer always treated everyone involved fairly, and with respect. And what's more impressive is the fact that she possesses this calm, um, um, what do you call it, um, reassuring demeanor that puts all parties at ease, especially when you're working on a sensitive cases like sexual assault or child abuse, that is very critical. And how do I know that? Because it works on me sometimes when I get stressed out. <laughs> Jennifer tells me, hey, Captain, calm down. All right, I got it. Over the years, Jennifer held, uh, has built this excellent relationship with our school administrators in Cupertino. So that's why it's not uncommon for our school administrators to contact Jennifer on her days off 
with problems or whenever they have a question. But it's not just the school administrators that view Jennifer as a go-to person. Her peers looked up to her as a leader and somebody that they can trust with any questions that they may have. So she's a very good role model because of the high standards and her excellent work ethic that she displays every day she came to work. Her love for our West Valley community just didn't end there. Jennifer has provided invaluable assistance to Christmas in Moffitt that has benefited over 1,700 children of our military personnel since 2008. Now, nobody asked Jennifer to take on that daunting task that often required her to contact sponsors and collaborate with other volunteers, but she only did it because she truly cared for those children who would spend their Christmas and holidays without their mom, dad, or both. And sometimes for those children whose parents would never be able to join them forever due to their ultimate sacrifice for our country. Because of these positive attributes and traits, Jennifer now has moved on to a new assignment. She will be greatly missed by our Cupertino community and West Valley Patrol Division. And I truly believe her dedication and all the good things that she was able to bring to our community, she totally deserves it. And they truly reflect positively on the Sheriff's Office as well as our great city, Cupertino. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I now give you the newest addition to our investigative services, Detective Jennifer Toomey. So we're going to call up one at a time for, uh, to, for Jennifer to receive the award. So first, let's bring the whole gang over here, back again. So um, Assemblyman Joe Smitten is going to present the award to Jennifer. And then a representative for Senator Beer's office, please present to representative from Senator Jim Beer's office. Jim Bell's office, yes. And representative from uh, Evan Lowe's office. And our very own mayor has an award for Jennifer, too. Also from the Chamber of Commerce. Also from the Chamber of Commerce. And I personally would like to say Jennifer actually came to my house one time and um, I'm advisor for Vidadero and Monta Vista student run newspaper and we're working about uh, curfew. So Jennifer came and meet my students and had a great talk with the kids. So thank you very much, Jennifer, for your dedication and your, for, the, for youth in our area. Let's give Jennifer another round of applause. Let's get together and get a group picture. Let's give our recipients another round of applause. Oh, no, no, we're going to take a short break. We are going to take about a three minute break so you can go get water, do whatever you need to do, and then sh when I ring the bell, we will start up the State of the City Address. Three minutes. <laughs> 